In this video, I'm looking at the Dunu Talos Planar In-Ear Monitors, or the Dunu Talos Hybrid Planar and Balanced Armature In-Ear Monitors. Let's get it. What's cracking audio fans? It's David here from Prime Audio Reviews. Now I'll quickly open the box to show you that you do get a case inside and oddly the label seems to be upside down. Not only that, let me move that box aside. Not only that, but I, I really don't know what they're thinking with this case design because you can only open it so far and it's a real pain in the butt. But, um, but I, I digress. Uh, let me get back to the IEMs real quick. Now the price of the Dunu Talos is $199. And inside, as I mentioned, there's a planar magnetic driver. I believe it's a 14.5 millimeter. And there are also two balanced armature drivers. And the big feature, which is really probably more of a gimmick, is this switch here and that enables you to on the fly switch between pure planar magnetic and hybrid planar and BA modes. Let's have a look at the shells first and as always look if there's anyone that does builds or build quality really really well it's Dunu and this is the perfect example of that. This has the build quality of a much more expensive in-ear monitor. It is rather exquisite. The shells are reasonably comfortable. They're pretty chunky, but they are comfortable and I don't have any problems wearing them for extended periods. As far as the cable goes, it is pretty standard for a Dunu cable. Pretty good quality. Unfortunately, for some reason, you it only comes with the 3.5 millimeter termination. It's not a modular cable like a lot of the other Dunu IEMs have. So you're stuck with that unless you want to change it out for a third party cable. But let's get right down to it and talk about the sound. And the Dunu Talos is an IEM that I both love and hate. Let me explain why. And I'll today I'll start with the mid-range because the mid-range is absolutely exquisite. It's a fairly neutral mid-range, but the, the timbre of it, the tone of it, it's uncolored, it's very accurate, it's very natural. It is a magic mid-range and it sounds very, very lovely. Both vocals and instruments sound lifelike and realistic. It's got this sort of lovely organic sound to it it's very resolving it's also very detailed it's quite nuanced it's got a pretty good sound stage and then we've got the treble and in the pure planar magnetic mode the treble is nice and detailed it is crisp and precise the treble is quite forward and it does give a sort of brighter edge to the overall tone, but the, the mid-range sounds neutral. The treble is a little bit forward, so you do get a sort of a brighter sound signature. And uh, I don't really have any complaints about the treble. The treble sounds nice. The timbre is accurate. If you do switch on the switches here like that. Oh, that's another thing I forgot to mention. These are toolless switches, so you can just do it with your fingers, which is really, really good because a lot of these ones, you've got to get one of those fiddly little uh, tools to change the switch. Not so in this case, but if you put that switch on, suddenly these become quite bright. Oh, let's look at the graph. And um, yeah, you can see there the difference between planar magnetic and the hybrid mode. In the hybrid mode, uh, it's pretty pretty consensual across the board. People do not like it um, because it does get quite bright. The, the timbre remains fairly accurate, which is surprising, but that treble is just a little bit too forward and too aggressive. So pretty much everyone, as far as I know, listens with the switch off or in pure planar magnetic mode. So the mid-range is beautiful. The treble is a, a bit forward, definitely not for the treble sensitive, but it is a nice treble. It's a good quality one. 
I'm going to jump straight to the sound stage and technicalities now. I know I haven't talked about the bass. That is coming. I want to talk about the technicalities first because the sound stage is excellent. It's not especially wide. It's a nice rounded stage. The imaging is very precise. It's good. The overall resolution is quite good, especially in um, pure planar magnetic mode. If you got it in hybrid mode, excessive crash cymbals and certain instruments will sort of give it a hazy treble washout in terms of imaging or whatever. But soundstage good, imaging good, instrument separation and resolution are good. Not fantastic, but uh, yeah, pretty good. Where these do excel is in their clarity though and detail retrieval, very good in both of those terms. But let me get to the bass now and this is where, in my opinion, oh, things all fall down because the bass, although the quality of it is very good, it is very light in quantity, light enough to be oh, like a ghost of an IEM pretty much. It, uh, and you've heard me say this similar things before about other IEMs. It lacks emotion. It, uh, it lacks engagement. It lacks rhythm and, and soul because the, the mid and the upper bass are just attenuated so heavily that it sucks the soul out of the sound. The bass extension is decent i wouldn't say it's great but there's it's definitely not an authoritative bass it doesn't have a whole lot of impact or body to it or weight it you'll hear the tones but it doesn't really doesn't give you that big bass feeling and it's not due to a planar driver we've seen plenty of planars that have great bass like the ztn woo like the wrapped go hook x and like the let's shoe uh, s12 and s12 pro so it's not about the planar it's about the tuning and unfortunately the bass has been nerfed pretty hard here in favor of resolution and details now there are a lot of nerds out there who love that kind of approach personally i just find it very frustrating and the end result for me at least is a sound that just doesn't i cannot connect with I'll listen to music and I'll appreciate that timbre, that clarity, but I'm just not moved in an emotional sense. Like, uh, honestly, this is going to sound crazy, but there are many sub $100 IEMs that I would rather spend a day with than the Dunu Talos. It's kind of like ordering a hamburger and you get this delicious toasted buns with a um, uh, fantastic tasty sauce and a fresh salad but there's no meat patty there's nothing in it or it's like you go to kfc and you order a drumstick you get this delicious golden drumstick but someone's already taken a bite out of it there's just something missing and it leaves me unfulfilled However, if you are one of those people who just wants to hear the mids, you don't care about bass guitars, you don't hear, you don't care about the the resonance of lower register cello notes, that beautiful low register body that you get, then you'll love these. Uh, very detailed, like I said, but it's for me, it just doesn't cut it in terms of tonal balance. It's lacking pretty hard. But at the same time, having said that, it's a little bit hard to judge it too harshly because what it does do, it does so well. However, it's not something that I would ever consider using myself for a daily driver. I would rather use the Moondrop Kato, the Secreal Airship, the Lechua S12, S12 Pro, the Wrapped Go Hook X, just because of the tonal balance but that's just me that's my preference i'm not saying it's a bad iem i'm just saying it's not for me however it does have some very very promising qualities about it and it shows that possibly in the future dunu might just drop the absolute plain out bomb of an iem but in my opinion at this stage they have not and i'm going to wrap it up there guys thanks for watching if you like the video give it a thumbs up parfam audio file style leave a comment down below let me know what you think have you tried these are you satisfied with the bass level like do you like bass guitars 
If you're new here to the channel and you want to see more content like this in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And until next time, I'll see you later.